Good morning, all. Hi. Hey, Rana, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Brandon. Um, can you help us the day for today? Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um. Good morning, all. Um. We are two minutes after. Let's give one more minute to for folks to join if someone else is trying to join the meeting, and we'll get started. Do we have anyone who can who can be described today for this, please? Anyone open to helping out? Okay, um, I think we can get started. I haven't seen anything on the agenda for today, um, but I know we have a team here um, that is working on cloud native security controls. And we have John, Frederick, and um, other folks who are participating, Michael here as well, who are participating in that effort. So John, do you wanna go ahead and share some updates on what the what the work has been and what we are working on sure uh, just give me one moment mm -hmm. i had to install zoom so i think i might still have to give it permissions to let me share All right, can you see the slideshow? Yeah, we do. Thank you. All right. Um, so yeah, this will be pretty brief. Uh, I think uh, it's after some recent conversations, we wanted to give uh, a bit of an update on what the Cloud Native Security Controls Catalog project has been up to, um, what we have done, what we're planning to do next, um, and see if we can uh, gather a little bit more momentum and, and make some progress, get uh, some initial releases of some sort of deliverable out and continue to iterate on that. So um, this project has been going for a while. Uh, I am uh, currently uh, leading the initiative, but um, that was not initially the case. So we've had a little bit of a handover there and I uh, slowed down the project a little bit, but we're looking to pick things back up. Um, here is essentially the, the team of people who've been contributing. So thanks everyone who's been doing that uh, sort of work. So, um, so just to talk a little bit about what the uh, controls catalog is. Um, 
our goal is to uh, expand on the existing CNCF bodies of work. So the cognitive security white paper, the software uh, supply chain white paper, and um, kind of map to those white papers uh, using a, creating a list of controls that map to those white papers. So um, while it's useful to have the kind of white paper format, uh, sometimes we found our audience uh, could use a little bit more of a bulleted list. Um, and so that's one of the things that we've started to do so far, as well as to add additional implementation details for those controls. So um, the white papers stay fairly high level, at least the ones that we have uh, looked at so far. Um, and one of the goals of the catalog is to uh, provide additional kind of implementation guidance, implementation details for those controls. I uh, also felt like it was important to say what the scope is not for this project. So we are not looking to redo any mappings that existing that already exist. So things like crosswalks between uh, ISO and 853 and high trust uh, FedRAM, things along those lines. We may use those um, and we're not looking to kind of redo that work though. Um, so the general theme of this work is uh, to become a catalog, right? An index of the controls in some of these different frameworks and provide some additional details is suggestions in implementation where that doesn't exist. Um, and the audience that we envision uh, would find this useful are partly technical and partly kind of more on the audit and GRC side. So um, DevSecOps engineers, SREs, platform engineers uh, looking to use the implementation guidance and uh, kind of maybe learn uh, how to implement some of the control suggestions that are outlined in the white papers, as well as auditors, regulators, uh, people in GRC roles to in look at an environment and identify whether or not it is meeting uh, good practices or, or uh, the practices that are outlined in the white papers. All right, thanks, Rory. Um, so current state, uh, we uh, the work is outlined in issue 635. This is a quick snippet of the spreadsheet, but I'll just kick over to it real quick. Um, essentially what we have is a listing of controls uh, that were identified in the different white papers. And, you know, we've got maybe uh, 197, almost 200 of them right now. Uh, we've done some iteration on the schema of how we want to outline this stuff, but the format is still a little bit rough. Um, we have mapped things back to sections in the white papers. So ostensibly you could start at the controls catalog, see that this is interesting and want to read the section of the white paper and kind of go backwards and see the CNSWP version 1.0 uh, access section will uh, elaborate maybe a little bit on keys are rotated frequently or at least give some context around it. And the idea is that um, the implementation details we would be fleshing out over um, as well, mapping mapping to those controls. Um, all right. Uh, and then there's some kind of partially complete work for uh, mapping to 853, you'll notice that's a little bit uh, in the future state of this project um, down here. Uh, but yeah, we are doing some mapping to NISTA 853, R4, R5 um, of, of these controls uh, with the idea that a lot of pre-existing controls crosswalks exist and many of those include 853. And so mapping to that uh, may be helpful to map into other frameworks without having to actually do all of that mapping work ourselves. Uh, and admittingly, admittedly, that would be a little bit lossy, but and imperfect, but non-zero benefit, I believe. Um, so that's kind of uh, what we have. We've worked uh, a bit in the two existing white papers and plan to keep up the date as uh, we know that uh, more revisions of those white papers will be coming out, uh, but also want to dig a little bit deeper in the controls information that are provided uh, in the deliverable. So uh, like I mentioned, mapping to 853, um, things like 800 the SSDF from NIST, uh, and also starting some collaboration with the uh, policy working group. So uh, I'm a little personally less familiar with this, uh, but we were talking recently about 
um, providing outputs or information in more machine readable format using OSCAL um, or potentially something else uh, instead of having this in a spreadsheet format, as well as um, you know, one of my big goals for this project is to be able to automate assessments of an existing environment against these controls to identify whether uh, there is partial implementation or complete implementation of some of these controls and finding different ways, different integrations um, programmatically to identify those and to better equip uh, you know, auditors, regulators, GRC teams uh, to walk into an environment and assess how they are doing uh, against the controls outlined in uh, you know, the white papers that the CNCF has put together and potentially others uh, in the future as well. Um, and then, you know, be able to feed that to implementation teams uh, to improve the security of their environments. So, um, yeah, I'll pause there for a second. Did anyone have any questions? No questions. Um, um, this is called for participation, right? We, we need more folks focused on this um, who can help potentially in mapping some of these standards. Uh, we know SSDF version one is still draft and it's just come out. Um, and that is the piece where, uh, you know, CICD pipelines and all the supply chain security controls um, can be also mapped into this. Um, there's work to be done, or <laughs> just need more help here. And, you know, um, I know John and Frederick and um, Michael and a few other folks have been kind of focused on this. Uh, we need more hands here. So if anyone is interested, in making a huge impact. So think of about it like a cloud controls matrix for cloud native, right? Um, like CCM from um, Cloud Security Alliance, this will become equivalent to that for cloud native security. So which, which has had a huge impact on the industry as you know. So please comment on the issue that um, John just shared and get involved. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for that. Yeah, thanks. If I could add one, uh, oh, go ahead. If I could add one thing to it real quick. So uh, one of the big value propositions that this provides us is if you have an auditor, right now we have auditors who they don't know how to audit a cloud native system. And the security controls environment is one of the key uh, is one of the key documents that they will be able to use to determine whether or not somebody in the cloud native space is compliant or, or not. So that should help increase not only the, uh, the total security stance of, uh, of companies over time, but should also increase the total adoption because one of the key uh, blockers to adopting cloud native technologies in some scenarios of, of, or rather accelerating the adoption, I should say, is how do I observe this thing? How do I audit it? How do I know that we're that we're in a good position? So th this acts as a foundation to answering that question. So it's very possibility for, for very high impact in, in that respect. Yeah, and, and the goal of integration with OSCAL is it's continuous ATO, right? Authority to operate almost like FedRAMP. Uh, similarly, cloud native controls, um, they are dynamic, so it, it has to be continuous. So once we have this automated integration um, with OSCAL, it will be very easy to find where the gaps are. Um, but at the same time, there is an existing POC that Policy Working Group did with OSCAL. We can potentially leverage that once we have mapped all the controls, obviously. Thank you. Um, so one other thing uh, to add there. Um, so yeah, I haven't had a lot of time myself, uh, it, um, but I plan to sort of um, hopefully find a few folks from from my team to continue to contribute. But uh, would uh, you folks be interested in giving um, a, a demo or a presentation also to the financial services user group um, in the CNCF? Uh, that's one of the ones I co-chair, and I think they would be very interested given, I think as as Frederick uh, mentioned there, right? Like this is makes auditing um, a lot easier. And if you tell uh, somebody who works in finance, hey, this will help you out in auditing, they'll be like, hey, how, yeah, yeah, how how can I contribute? Yeah, exactly. Um, I think they'd be. I think they would be also very interested in in contributing. Yeah, that sounds great. That'd so awesome. yeah, we can take take it on a roadshow, John, right? Um, and get some more participants that way, um, and see if we can make some 
big leaps in getting these mappings out, right? Um, I also wanted to mention that CSA has reached out to us and NIST has reached out to us on a number of initiatives where they want to collaborate with us. So we might be able to get some additional volunteers from those collaborations, but still work in progress. We're still having those conversations. Um, and once that is finalized, we might be able to expand our volunteer base to work on this project. Awesome. Uh, so if there aren't any other questions or comments, um, just wanted to wrap up with some quick references so everyone knows. So we do have a channel in Slack, the Tag Security Controls. Um, we have a weekly meeting. It is on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I am unsure if the issue was able to uh, get updated with the correct timing, um, but we did move to um, Wednesdays. Yeah, so this is inaccurate. This needs to get updated. Um, it is on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. There's a meeting invite. If you'd like to be added, uh, just shoot me a quick message and I can add you. All I need is your email. Um, here's where we're meeting. So you're also welcome just to show up. Um, and we have um, uh, meeting minutes, which I believe should be shared pretty, uh, pretty publicly, at least read only, uh, if you're interested in to see what we've been up to um, going back to May. Um, so yeah, I can also uh, share these slides if everyone, if anyone is interested, I'll just throw a quick uh, link in the chat that should give you edit access, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I had. Thank you, John. Great effort there. So um, I don't have, um, I didn't see anything else on the agenda for today. Um, but we have time for open discussion if anyone wants to bring up anything that they're concerned about or any other areas where we should be working on. Um, one other just quick follow up um, just regarding the, the financial services user group is that they've been uh, the, the folks on the call have been expressing some desire to kind of see some more uh, interesting projects that some of the other folks um, throughout the CNCF are working on in particular things that people might think, Hey, you know, you work in, you know, FinServe, you might be interested in, in this tool. And I think one of the things that we're all very interested in is, um, security. So, you know, in the new year, I think we'd be very interested in both contributing and also seeing, uh, demos from various, uh, CNCF tag security projects. That's interesting. So yeah, we should have a greater collaboration there, right? Um, are they aware of all the policy white paper that we are ready to publish? Um, I don't think so. Um, I, yeah, I, 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 some, some might, but I, I know when it comes to a lot of um, a lot of the folks in that user group is, you know, uh, finance, FinServe has a has a uh, has a reputation of being very insular and and cut off from the rest of the world and being, you know, and and I think that is relatively uh, that is a true uh, assessment. And so a lot of times we're just not very familiar with with some of those things. So it would not uh, surprise me. Yeah, so we need to figure out how can we cross collaborate, right? There are a number of other initiatives which might be interesting to those, um, that group, right? Um, and um, um, there are, um, so another piece of work that app delivery team is working on is the chaos, security chaos engineering. Um, that is the third layer of detection and response, right? To improve your cloud native platforms and their security. Um, that could be interesting to that group too. So, so maybe, um, we should have an offline discussion, Michael, as to what all they'll be interested in, and then we can facilitate, right? How do we cross collaborate there along with that? Yeah, group? of course. Cool. Um, so I can give talk updates. Yesterday was a talk meeting that I presented to. I've shared the status of work. We are doing the Cloud Native Security oh. White Paper version two, and um, the feedback that we had provided on SSDF version one to NIST and what we are gonna do about that in the next year. Um, what happened is NIST had a very tight timeline. On a Friday afternoon, we were sent the SSDF to review and me, Emily and Brandon got the chance to review it. And we provided over 300, 200 some items uh, as feedback to them, but they were not able to incorporate that. Reason for that, that they had a deadline to go live with the draft. So draft is out, 
but we we still have work to do to incorporate all that feedback that we had provided on the cloud native technologies. So that will be a piece of work which we will take up in next year. Um, and also, as I mentioned, CSA has been reaching out to us for better collaboration. Um, so the feedback I got from talk was um, that uh, this is really great that external entities are reaching back to this group. That means we are really contributing to the industry and they are in the, interested in the work we are doing. So kudos to all of you for building this community and making an impact in the industry. So that, the, that was the talk update. Um, and we know serverless white paper is still in work and there are some subsections where we still need help. So if you are familiar with the technology and you would like to contribute, please reach out um, and you know comment on the issue and we can include you in that white paper as well. I know um, Ariel, John Kinsella and Pushkar are have, have taken up some sections and they're gonna be revamping those sections in the white paper as well. Yeah, thank you for the update, Arathna. It's uh, interesting that CSA is also uh, interested in participating. Um, just for what, what it's worth, I work a lot with the CSA Colorado chapter. I'm a part of the board there, uh, but we don't necessarily participate a lot in like working groups. It's more like building the community within Colorado, um, but it's good to see uh, the CSA global team chipping in as well. Yeah. Yeah, I work with the global team quite a bit. So that's how they reached out to me, you know, to ah, increase the collaboration with CNCF. So thank you for that. Yeah. So folks, I don't have anything else um, unless you have any other Questions, comments, or feedback? So, uh, Michael, um, in terms of your call out for the for the financial services group, um, I can talk on two particular subjects as well. The first one is on uh, Spiffy and and Spire. Uh, the focus should be more on Spiffy than Spire itself. Uh, they can help them achieve a, a workload identity strategy. The second one is I've also done a lot of stuff in the supply chain space as well. So if they're interested, well, not if, but when they're interested in, in supply chain work that we're doing, um, I can put together an overview of things that we're doing within the community that can help them, which also ties into the, into the work that uh, NTIA and CISA are, are doing towards, um, towards achieving that, uh, that goal. So. Uh, let's see if we can connect afterwards and perhaps we can we can have some discussions on what would be appropriate. Sure, yeah. No, I've definitely given some um, demos on some of the supply chain work in the supply chain working group and some of the other things that we're doing, but I know that there's a lot of areas throughout all this that, that they're going to be um, <laughs> very interested in. I think obviously uh, most of these things will all be happening in the new year with, I think, us taking the next couple of weeks off uh, as far as also the FSUG meeting. Yeah, and the the end goal for me with uh, with this, or not the end goal, but one of the goals is that uh, the supply chain provenance, like the SBOMs and similar metadata that we can gather from it, uh, feed into Spiffy in such a way that I can uh, control whether I issue a Spiffy identity or not based upon the supply chain provenance and metadata that's there. So tying into things like uh, continuously checking like, what CVs are there? How do I audit up the chain? Uh, what if I want to put an enforcement action on something? Then like, how do I, that, that gives us a really, uh, a really strong control point that, uh, that helps unify these particular, uh, uh, these particular things together. So uh, that's part of, of how I would uh, pitch a possible integration to them would be through, through that path as well. Yep, and and it sounds very interesting. Actually, something that personally I've been working on something similar uh, quite recently. Um, you know, my team has been working on quite uh, uh, similar. So we definitely be interested in collaborating and seeing um, uh, on that on that front as well. Perfect. Yeah, and uh, I'm on Slack, so definitely uh, ping me there. Yeah, sure. Oh, great. Thank you. 
Any other questions, comments? So are we meeting next week? I'm not sure. There was a schedule put out by Brandon somewhere. I think this was the last one, if I am right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, when Brandon put up, he's the 8th December, we eat as usual, and then break till the new year. And then gotcha. the January. Okay, cool. Well, um, if you're not meeting for the rest of the year, then I want to wish you all Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we'll talk to you all in 2022. If you all enjoy your time with your families and friends. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy, happy holidays. Bye. See you in the new year. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.